Bombing is just all out destruction. You know, just going out, just like bombing, like dropping a bomb. This is the point from which I can never retreat. Because if I turn back now, they can never be. If you go to the very essence of the graffiti movement, it's all about the signature and the tag. But that grew to something bigger. Somebody grabbed a pen and said, hey, this is cool, but this is better. This is how we do a throw up. I'm going to show all you new jack motherfuckers out there. First, you do your outline, then you fill it in. Using a fat cap, which spreads real quick, as you can see. Now I'm outlining my throw up. It could take me up to a minute or two. Boom. And that's it, baby. It's a wrap. And then somebody say, right, but this is better than all of that. Pieces are just, you know, your name done in elaborate letters, whether it's simple style pieces or wild style pieces. You got two color blends, you got either shadow or 3D, you add some designs, maybe a cloud, a trim. So the whole art form is based upon lettering. You know how jazz, he took jazz and they broke it from his classical form and flipped it and started adding bebop to it in different forms. And we did the same thing with letters. We took the basic alphabet and stretched it. We took a P, as you see here, and it elongated it here and added extensions here and just added funk to it, like we do to everything. You don't want to lose the basis of the letter, but you want to lose the letter. It's taking your name, your identity, and, like, exaggerating it. P-O-S-E-T-W-O, post two. Ball style really isn't a style of letters, it's a way of life. Okay, let's get that straight right now, yo. And I gotta give a shout out to Tracy 168, the president of the Wild Style crew all the way back in the 70s. So I was wild, don't tell me how to live unless you're ready to die for me. But style, class, I respect you, respect me. So Wild Style combined as one word became what I live like who I am. It couldn't be me doing it by myself. It took everybody to believe in a certain way of living. And we reflected it in our graffiti in our letters, and that's how we expressed it. That was Wild Style. We go up, yo, let's go to the top of the Brooklyn Bridge, let's do a piece right there. That's Wild Style. Doesn't matter if the letters are all nasty or, you know, flowing with style. No, no, no. It's my name is up on Brooklyn Bridge. You ain't fucking doing that, my man. That's Wild Style. We took a tag, and then I thought I'd never see it again. Maybe in the afternoon, we were on the way back, and I look on the train, I see my name on the train, and I went, Whoa! I thought there was endless amount of trains. I couldn't believe I saw my name again, and I got a rush. There was a tag next to it saying something. So I went something like, what's up? And they went, hey, what's going on from Brooklyn? Wow, this is the greatest thing. come to you moving around on wheels. That's just the way I look at it. A museum on wheels? Where you gonna get that? Only in New York City. This was my very first choo-choo train that I painted at barely 16 years old. Once I saw that name go by on a live train, people going in and getting out, I just had to continue doing it. My mom was, of course, horrified that I was running around, sneaking out of the house at night. There was no stopping me. I would jump out the bedroom window and go painting with my friends, and I'd sneak back in the house, and my mom would slap the hell out of me. Hate it when a hand comes out of the dark and just beats you up. You're not even expecting it. You're sneaking in. Whoosh. The more they told me, you're a girl, you can't paint graffiti, you can't go to subways because you're a girl, you're a mere female. I had to stand up and just shut them up. It's not a game. It involves hooking up with someone that knows a particular train yard or layup, knows the schedules, knows when it's the appropriate time to go in, how long should you be there, knows the escape routes. You've got to be able to run and carry a heavy bag of paint and climb a huge fence and wall. You go in there almost like a, like a small military mission. Riders are street soldiers. You go on missions because that's what we do. We plan out, we're calculated, we have strategy, we look at the maps. We do our homework. We're not fighting your war, we're fighting our own war. Going for a thrill ride, an adventure with your friends at night. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. Someone could get hurt. Hope you get home in the morning. Maybe you'll wake up in jail. That's excitement. Back 
Back in 89, they officially cleaned the last train. The city got smart. They recognized that graffiti writers like fame. Take the fame away, and you have no graffiti. Here's the deal. You write it, I clean it. You write it, I clean it. You write it, I will never let it leave the yard. Eventually, you'll say, the hell with that. He ain't gonna let it roll. Nobody will get to see it. And that's what they did. All the writers said, F it, hell with that. I wasn't ready to stop writing graffiti just because trains weren't bombed anymore. So, you know, most of that energy was just focused elsewhere. You know, the graffiti might not have continued on the subways, but, you know, it was survived on the streets. Uh, my name's fucking Revs. F-U-C-K-I-N, R-E-V-S. And I'm a writer, graffiti writer. I'm not really into people too much. Some people go to a job and they, they say, I'm a people person. Well, I wouldn't say that. I got my dog, he's my partner. You know, and that's, that's all I need, you know what I mean? About 1980, 1981 is when I got into punk rock, graffiti. I never looked back since, and I don't give a damn about hardly nothing in this world. I mean, if you're gonna tell me you're gonna die two seconds from now, I said good. My old man, he was a millwright. My grandfather was an iron worker, a union iron worker. My uncle's a union iron worker. I'm an iron worker. We're just basically blue collar, just working jackasses, you know what I mean? And I never wanted to become this. This is something I've hated when I was a kid, because I used to see my father lace up his boots like, and get out of the house at 5.30 in the morning. That's why I wrote graffiti. That's why I was into hardcore. I was just like, I don't want to be like him. You know, and turns out I became almost just like him. You know what I mean? And it throws my head off, because I'm like, how the fuck did this happen? Since I fought so hard against everything, you know? I started posting up bills. And then at the same time, I seen Cost post bills. I called them up, and we had the same exact philosophy. It was just like, fuck everything, fuck everybody. Let's just take over and shove it down their motherfucking throats, man. And that's what we did. We just went ass wild on the city. And by 95, I guess the city just had enough of us. CO got bagged. He got, uh, what, five years probation. He got 3,000 hours community service. He got fined, and uh, that's when I went underground. The subway tunnels were the most beautiful element around, because there's nothing like being in a subway tunnel. It's, it's one of the more dangerous places, but it's one of the most peaceful and safe places at the same time. I would just prime out a big ass section of wall I just write shit, you know, stories that happened. You know, my goal was to do every single subway tunnel in the system. I think I was like maybe 35 short, and I would have got all the way if I wasn't stopped. I ran into the police, basically. Ever since the early 70s, politicians, lawmakers, never really knew what to do with kids that were writing, and never really quite figured out a healthy way to deal with it. So they decided to criminalize it. Go do it! The, the subway system is the lifeblood of the city. People weren't riding the subway. They were leaving the subway in droves. Most people said 40, 50, and 60% of the crime in the city occurred in the subway. Why, why do people feel it's so bad? Well, look at the graffiti. Now, it is not to suggest that the graffiti caused the crime, but the graffiti gave the impression, at best, that no one was in control of the system. 